Okay, so let's start um, having a look at this. Uh, I think it's good to take it in this order. This is the kind of what the exam board have asked us to think about. Um, I think this is um, fine. Uh, That's what I'm doing the most at the moment. Yeah, just talking. and then you're going to go on to talk about just like a, I mean, as if you were analysing um, someone else's piece of film. The last part is going to be, oh well, I did this and this. I mean, you've done a little bit about spectator yes. response, yeah, that kind of yeah. thing. Um, but connotations, I think. So the thing that at the moment you need to add in. Uh, this crazy rule that they have given us is that when you talk about the influence of the films, the short films that we've watched, mm -hmm. you're going to need to refer to at least three of them. Yeah. So it can't just be um, night fishing. Mm -hmm. And they have to total more than 80 minutes. Okay. Now that may well be. Uh, you know, what I'm going to suggest is that most people will get up to about 50 minutes, maybe, and then we're just going to put something like this in and say, which we didn't watch, and say, the film La Ricotta I watched had no influence, had no influence on my film whatsoever. Uh, so, so we're going to need to add in something there at the moment. But what I wanted to do, first of all, is just to talk about the other films that we have watched so that you can um guys i'm recording here can you be quiet marcus you're definitely not going to finish if you're just sitting back in your chair not doing anything please get on with something um the uh you know i i, I think you should definitely talk about the, the genre of pitch black heist and how um, you know the kind of crime element got you thinking about mm, yeah. you know so that would be one that I would start with mm -hmm. um, and uh, in terms of uh, the focus on sort of an, an, a, a small number of characters you could talk about stutterer even though obviously it's a very different genre yeah you could talk about that you could talk about the when cinema you say characters you mean like how they're portrayed yeah like but also you know i mean you could even talk about mise-en-scene and say i you know stutter a lot of that is set in his bedroom in his house where he's working on the computer and you've got that scene at the beginning where they're in yeah scene. i mean i know this is quite tenuous yeah. but it's part of what they've asked us to do so we just need to make sure um we're doing that um we didn't watch this one uh, no. But um, it's a very I, one of the reasons I didn't show it to you is because it's very bleak. <laughs> um, just trying to think where I put it. Uh, I just want to show you a bit of it so you can think about. Let's see if it's here. Um, a bit on my other computer. Sorry, give me a minute. Okay. Um, we can't watch it here because uh, we can't. The, there's a link to it on. Um, yeah, but we can't get into it Can essentially what it, yeah you should be able to what it is is uh, it's a film about the troubles in northern ireland when people were being shot by republicans and um uh, and unionists um and essentially it's a series of people walking up to other people shooting them dead and then walking away again. <laughs> it's quite bleak quite violent, quite naturalistic in its settings, but pretty um, surreal and hard hitting. And you could say I chose the theme of drugs and you know I, I wanted to go for a serious issue in the same way that Elephant went for a serious issue. So maybe have a look so at that. They've, they've chosen a, 
actual event in time and how did they like? What was their idea when you see how you were talking about that they shot the the Republicans were shooting them? Yeah. Was that like seen as a big issue? Or was that what the movie I'm, portrayed it as? The uh, let me show you. Like, did it have the exposure or it wasn't a big um So here's an example of one of the killings, them going into a school. There's never really any conversation. It's all quite naturalistic. No, this is not it. This is, sorry, that's not the original. See, it's just not on here at all. Somehow he's managed to get it off YouTube entirely. Now I'm going to have to get you a copy of it somehow. I think it's on Daily Motion. Let's see. It's all on Daily Motion. Can I access Daily Motion? Yeah, but not here at school. Okay, yeah, so this is the original film. Yeah, it's shot in a very naturalistic way. I'm trying to get one of the killings for you. They're just doing the walking here. There you go. There's barely any dialogue. And then sometimes they show them walking, or he shows them walking away. Um, but often it then just cuts to the next one. 15 killings. Okay. All right. So that's the um, first thing I would say about it. Uh, let's just have a look at what you've actually written. Um, Bath is B A R T H E S. Uh, I think at the beginning here you say something about... Um, yeah, it's not the best structure. Well, I, I just think you go straight into theory and I think you should introduce yourself and just say, I decided to, for my short film to, to create a narrative um, which centred on the theme of, or um, from the brief, I was um, I knew I wanted to have a narrative twist at the, at the end or I wanted to introduce an enigma at the beginning. I mean, start by talking about um, the initial ideas, because if you if you look at the 
guidance that they've um, given us here, an analysis of the key ideas and how the narrative developed. Yeah. yeah. So um, I would talk about that. Um, don't say anything negative. Mm -hmm. Why would you? I mean, it's honest, yeah. but let's big it up, shall we? Um, when you write the title of something, it definitely needs a capital letter. None of the none of the capital letters are in place because of the blog. It doesn't. Oh, okay. Check them. So I've just been going through um, the word. But, and, them and can you put it in italics as well? Okay. Um, Is that for um, even the short files? Yeah. yeah always. Ones. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so. Um, why don't you um, have a look when you're talking about lighting you just asked me about that um, why don't you have a look at um, where is it here have a look at this which is quite an interesting um, piece about um, film noir which is a lighting and plot. Film noir's most noticeable feature is its dark, low key lighting. This technique is often called chiaroscuro, an old word that refers to the harsh treatment of light and shadow in drawings, paintings, and film. Okay. In chiaroscuro, the so, so watch that. I'll send you the link to this. Watch this film, and what it's talking about is how. European film movement, German Expressionism, where they use very strong shadows and things like that. It's the kind of thing that Curtis was influenced by for Casablanca. And how this genre sprung up called film noir, which was often about kind of quite difficult subjects, often crime. Um, one of the indicators, one of the characteristics of this was this kind of lighting that suggested, you know, there's good and evil and there's you can be in you can walk the path of righteousness like in pulp fiction or you can go the dark way yeah and that would might be a useful way to talk about lighting yeah yeah so i'll put that in um when i send you the link to uh this film um i'll send you that link uh let's just go back here um that's fine um i would say by henry mancini here yeah, um, I, was, yeah I wasn't uh, i would say enhance rather than suggest i i don't i don't know that the pink panther because it's such a distinctive tune has been used in many other films i just don't know that it has Okay, so you could research that, but I would be wary about saying that. It's just um, when I've seen it implemented, the reason I used it was similar to why I've seen it used before, to add some slight suspense to the scene. But, but where? Uh, isn't the movie called Pink Panther? Yeah. Yeah, we used it in there, but he's creeping around the flat. But, but when you say other films? So well, either be specific about, yeah. for example... In the yeah, I'd, I'd use that exact example then, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure about this sentence. Have a look at this again. Is hoping the audience will be intrigued to the setting and the conversation. It's just grammatically you need to clean that up a bit. Um, the wrap up. The Guys, you're just chatting again. Come on. the ending of the theme tune okay and it jumps to the next scene with new characters it's a new place a okay. new setting so when you're talking about things like that mm. try and talk about it in very specific media film language so you know you're talking about um editing was important here because i chose to end the soundtrack 
there was a mix yeah. and, and I introduced diegetic sounds, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Yeah, not yeah. just. That, that's what they're yeah. looking for. Um, if you look, uh, if I show you the... Scheme in here. That's going to be the other one. Just chatting again. It's getting boring now. an application of knowledge and understanding of how you've constructed it, including dialogue. Excellent consideration of the influences. Perceptive analysis of how visual, audio, and narrative elements are used to create meaning. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that means, although it doesn't say anything about language here, yeah, obviously used the right. that, is the, that is where you're going to, you need to hit those marks of these three um, bullet points. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah um okay so uh again another reference in my film yeah. is to the mirror sequence from taxi driver yeah mm -hmm. um i i i thought um my production was enhanced, or um, I enjoyed uh, the, this moment of intertextuality. I thought it lent my production, uh, you know, it was a meaningful link to a film that dealt with um, the psychology of a protagonist who, I'm just giving you yeah. kind of little stems here, okay? Off, yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. um, okay. 